Hey everybody, it's Chris. And today I am interviewing my very special sweet friend, Susie Griswold. Susie is a holistic cancer survivor with a, with a remarkable healing story and also the founder of Healing Strong, which is a nonprofit that I am a huge proponent of uh, that connects cancer patients with each other in local support groups to get love and support and encouragement and resources to help them survive and thrive. And uh, so she is a remarkable, incredible human being and, uh, and such a sweet person. And anyway, just glad to be with you, Susie. Glad to see you. How are you? I'm great. So good to see you too, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. So why don't we start with your cancer story and then we'll talk about Healing Strong too. Okay. Well, um, in 2009, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I was actually headed into surgery for a complete radical hysterectomy at the time. And they found this little lung or this little nodule. And the doctor said, you really need to get it checked out. We did, you know, did the biopsy. Um, and they said, definitely you need to have it removed. So this took precedence and I'm so glad it did because they, um, they actually removed the thyroid nodule. I did whatever they told me to do. I did the radiation and the follow-up scans from that point on for the next three months showed lymph node involvement. So it was at that time, um, I, I'm number 13 in my family to have had cancer uh, and 10 of whom had died. So I knew that it was pretty serious when it was in the lymph node. So um, I- not 13 siblings, right? Not 13 siblings. <laughs> okay, so just the 13th. First Yes, 13 first cousins, um, grandparents, my, my mother, my father. Wow. I mean, these are people who I loved and cherished and great grandparents, you know, that we just saw with cancer. So it was just, it just was a really scary word cancer was for me from the time I was little aunts and uncles and, you know, just people that we had done life with. So how old um, were you when I was diagnosed? Yeah. So this was 2009, I'm 54 now. So back that up, I was in my, I don't know, 50s, <laughs> I mean 40s, <laughs> I was in my 40s. <laughs> but um, anyway, it was just a wake up call. Um, when they found it in my lymph nodes, I actually began to see a lot of different doctors because I wanted the best doctor. So they told me things like, we will pluck it out one by one. We can pluck your lymph nodes out one by one. We can do a radical neck dissection. And when I began looking at holistic or alternative treatments at that time, I went to see a very well-known doctor in Houston who's alternative and who wanted to do chemotherapy. And that was for me like, no, I mean, that was a, a really big, um, a really big wake up call that if I was gonna do anything, uh, non-conventional that I need to dive in and do it all out. So I had been sent um, a lot of different books like you. I love your story. A lot of different books had been sent to me. Um, uh, and so at that point, the Gerson therapy really resonated with me. And there was an old book. I can't even find it anymore. It was written by Anne Fromm, My Cancer Battle Plan. Yeah, I have it. I've got it right I here. It. Oh. Yeah. It's a great book, right and I know me. I know Dave had her her husband has redone it. But anyway, I had Anne's old book. It was all laid out, and it really resonated with me. So I began implementing as much of the Gerson therapy, integrating what she did into my own plan, my own healing plan. But I realized in that, Chris, that there was so much more to my healing than just the physical tumors or, or lymph node involvement that I had a lot of bitterness and unforgiveness. Um, as a Christian, I began listening to the word of God on CDs. I, um, when I would do my coffee enemas every day, I did three a day. Um, I would listen to scriptures too. And that was the first time that I read through the Bible and began to see myself the way God sees me. And that has been probably the most ongoing journey for me is really unwrapping soul wounds and just healing from the inside out because it really is a systemic disease, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. not just about those lymph nodes that were involved, but, but also the soul and renewing our relationship with the Lord. So it took 18 months to, to heal um, completely. And I did things like um, 
25 pound bags of carrots every week. I really overdosed on juicing and I did a lot of detox. I did a vegan diet. I um, did the Hippocrates soup, um, just goodness. It was, and, and, I, and I took a step back from work. I was very much a full-time career oriented person. I um, stepped back from that and worked part-time and took care of my kiddos and just, you know, just really changed a lot of things. And you transformed your whole life, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been ongoing. It's not, it doesn't just happen. <laughs> did you get worse before you got better uh, in terms of once you started the, you know, Gerson therapy and nutrition and life change? I did. Yeah. I, well, when I say I got worse, um, I felt worse. So I mm. would go through, the, I really felt like I had the flu a lot. So I would go through what's called a healing crisis. Um, oftentimes in the, in the beginning, it was probably once a week and that was every two weeks. And then it just got further and further apart, but I was so toxic. My body was so toxic of so many things. I believe that was just my body's way of, of helping get that out and responding to that. So I didn't feel great. Um, through those crises, but when I go through the crisis, I did feel good for a good five or six days, and then I'd have another healing crisis. Um, I can tell you though that just in three months, I actually here was an indicator that happened in just three months. I had uh, my uterus. I was in going in, like I said, I was going in for surgery for a hysterectomy, and my uterus was sick. And after three months, I saw my OBGYN and my, and my uterus was completely normal. That's just in three months, you know, fibroid tumors and things really responded to my protocol at that time. So, and I have uh, neck tremors that are from a head and neck injury at a young age. Those even got better for a little while. I re-injured it a couple of years ago. So it's, I'm dealing with it again, but even those got better. Yeah, it's, you know, it's amazing that when, you know, when the body starts healing, it heals lots of things. Yeah. And uh, that's wonderful. I'd, I'd never heard you talk about the um, the uterine. So did you have the hysterectomy after all? Or no, not? no. And I don't need it. I just saw someone this year. It's completely normal. And Chris, I had that for, I mean, early in my marriage, you know, that was, that was something that I had dealt with early in my marriage. So uh, still uterine still fibroids, good. fibroids. Yep. Yeah. I never got a hysterectomy, never, you know, had to deal with any of that. Uh, and just recently, like I said, it was, it looked normal. So. What would you say was the most difficult part of the journey for you? Well, raising children on the Gerson diet. <laughs> That, I mean, if we talk about physical, you know, when you dive into healing holistically, you've got to commit your whole life to doing it. But yet life goes on on the outside with raising your children. I have two, two boys who are very active. Jeff and I were also very, are very active. And so, you know, living on, living on the road, doing travel soccer, you know, how do you uh, incorporate a healing um, diet uh, emotional healing. I mean, we really, we had to step back from even our church at the time. We left our church and went to another church for a season just so that we could, you know, just, just sit and heal and rest. So we, we radically changed our, our whole, um, uh, the people that we, that we dealt with. Jeff would get calls from people saying that Susie is crazy. She shouldn't be doing this, <laughs> She's really asking for it. And so, you know, yeah. that was part of really changing our circle and sphere of influence. Um, Jeff would answer phone calls. He really became the buffer for me. So, you know, it, it healing just, it was a radical transformation. And I think that the difficulty was this wasn't just going to be a, a one and done. I changed my diet and that's it. It was my family thought I was crazy. My friends thought it was kind of crazy. So you know, just there are so many things that happen during this time. And this really is why I think community is so important for people when they're walking, you know, through this journey. I'd love to unpack some of the things you said there. Um, I think there's a misconception uh, that the natural route or the alternative route or whatever is to sort of quick fix magic bullet. Yeah. 
you know, uh, wild goose chase. And the reality is, is people like you and myself and many others that we know who survived against the odds and have healed with a holistic approach, we all did the same thing, even though we didn't do the same things, right? There's, there's a, there's a core foundational list of things that we all did. <laughs> and it starts with being willing to change your whole life. And so the diet is, is really the first step. Uh, but beyond that, yeah, I mean, you, you go into a different church, rearranging your whole schedule and your life, simplifying your life, identifying stresses, you know, and, and, and having a gatekeeper like your husband that would, you know, sort of be the barrier or the buffer between you and maybe some uh, stressful people in your life that wanted to, you know, uh, felt the need to insert themselves uh, into. And they were well-meaning. Right? Of course, <laughs> yes. of course they're well-meaning, but sometimes well-meaning people, uh, you know, just can cause you a lot of stress and anxiety. Right. And so that the fact that you retreated into your own little healing, I talk about this in one of my books and into the chrysalis, you know, right. You kind of go into the cocoon, uh, into your own little healing bubble. Uh, and, uh, I think it's really important to do that and you can't keep living your life as normal. Um, because you know, the way you were living was killing you. Uh, and, you can't just keep on going that way and assume cross your fingers, right? And just hope you get better. Uh, it's the action, right? Faith without works is dead. And so the works was the action you took to change your life and, and trust in God to lead you in the process. I mean, it's the same exact thing I did, which I just love so much. Um, but the, the thing that you, that you kind of touched on is, uh, and I'd, lo I'd love to hear you talk about this more you know, there's so many excuses available to us, right? Because we all have different family circumstance, life, work, you know, uh, financial. Um, and it's, it's easy to let those excuses sabotage your progress or just hijack your plan. And so how do you encourage people? Because I know you spend a lot of time, like me, uh, talking to to cancer patients and helping them uh, work through their issues. <laughs> how do you how do you encourage folks and what do you say to them when they're kind of uh, throwing up the excuses, you know, like, oh, I can't, well, I've got kids to take care of. I've got, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's, that's such a great question because really everyone is individual. I just wanna, you know, we, I, we don't, I know I don't ever believe that I have the magic potion or pill for somebody that's gonna walk out their healing. But I do know the one who can help guide them in confidence in their decisions. So the first thing that I do is encourage them to get connected to our heavenly father because he really is the creator and he's the author of our life. And so um, as we connect with him, I believe that he's going to guide us. I tell people this, I don't ever believe you need to lose your house for healing. I believe that healing happens in the home. I don't believe healing happens in the doctor's office and whether they choose to do radiation or chemo or in Mexico or Italy or Germany or any of those places, healing doesn't happen there. Healing happens in the home. And so when we get that in our mind, number one, healing is going to happen in the home. Number two, God is not going to, you know, guide us into a pathway that's going to be full of chaos for our lives. I do not believe that. I do believe that if people are led to go to Mexico or something like that and they can't afford it, that, you know, ask for money. You know, we have not because we ask not. And if God is going to open up the way for you to do it, it's going to do. I tell our kids, we live by this. God's will, God's bill. If it doesn't work out, he's got another path for you. And so, and the majority of us, and we didn't have the money to go to Mexico. I mean, a friend of mine sponsored me to go to the clinic in Houston. Um, we did not have the money to do this. So, and it didn't resonate with me. I'm like, and she's like, Susie, I'll do whatever you need to do. She's just a beautiful friend and she had the resources. And we decided um, through much prayer after he wanted to do the chemotherapy that is that is not for me that's not what i wanted to do so she supported that 
But people like you and I and others that are, are especially starting out this journey, or maybe they've had a recurrence of cancer and they don't want to go back to where they, they've come from, the first thing they need to do is seek prayer and seek the Lord and get with the community of people. That's what I encourage. That will pray for them and help, you know, help encourage them in their pathway. And then remember that um, God, you are stronger than you think that God did not make us to be, there's, there's an old word that when I was young, um, God did not make us to be wussies. And he <laughs> does not want us to be wussies. He wants us to pick ourselves up, to dust ourselves off, to um, put on the armor and to, to walk this life out with strength. Whether you have five days to live or 25 years to live, you have a purpose and a, he's got a purpose and a plan for you. And that is so important that we believe that. And that's where community happens. And that's so important to do because all of us come into cancer, all of us. I've not met one person that does not have deep soul wounds, including myself, that need to dust them off. And sometimes it takes peeling them off and it's hard and you need a little more help. But he wants a strong Chris. And, um, and yeah, there's so much that, that we encourage people whenever they're on this journey that they can do it. Yeah. You have to, you know, everyone's journey is different. And, and what I find myself saying often is you just have to make it work for you. That's right. right. I mean, there, there are certainly a lot of guidelines and rules and ideas in terms of sort of structuring your healing day right? Restructuring your life and, oh, yeah. you know, <clears throat> rules about juicing and foods and, you know, whatever. But um, the point is not to, to get bogged down in, in those details to the extent that you become paralyzed because, yeah. because you're trying to do everything perfect. Uh, or good. what's that? I was going to say that's good. Because if you get in your mind that you've got to do everything perfect and it has to be structured this way, you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. That's divine, right. This is a this is divine interruption. So maybe your bathroom needs to become a healing place for, you know, a coffee enemas was a big part of what I do and I still do them. So my, our bathroom is set up that way. You know, maybe you're juicing every day, set up your kitchen as your healing room. And I know a lot of people are like, but this is my kitchen and I've got it set up just the way I want. And, you know, we have people over every week and we serve, you know, we, we host them and we've got, you know, things that, that we do every, you've got to make some changes. So yeah. That's Excuses. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so <clears throat> I, I'm probably a little tougher than you are. I'm, you know, uh, in my, my approach with folks, but, but, uh, but yeah, you you know your your journey won't be exactly like mine, right? Uh, and mine won't be like yours. And so we all have our own unique challenges, and hurdles, uh, and obstacles, right? And we just each of us is smart enough and has enough resources and enough brain power to take steps to solve the problems in our life, and uh, and the in you know I. Again, not to keep quoting my own books, but uh, <laughs> in Beat Cancer Daily, there's a page where I say, you know, if you solve enough problems, you get well. And so there's a series of problems in your life leading up to chronic disease, not just cancer. And so you have to kind of put on the investigative hat and take a step back and say, okay, like what, what, what's going on in my life? Like what, where are the problems I can solve? How can I improve? And, um, and with the attitude that everything's on the table, nothing's off limits, and I'm willing to change anything that needs to change. I'm willing to let go of anything that I previously couldn't imagine letting go of, you know, pizza and ice cream or whatever. <laughs> uh, and at, at the core, believing you can get well is really the absolute rock bottom sort of foundation of the approach, right? Is you do have to yes. believe you can get well. 
we do. It starts right. there. You quoted this before, and I love this. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. You know, if we believe that we are victims of cancer, we will behave like victims of cancer. It will come out in our conversations. It will take over our, you know, our demeanor. It, it really does. But if we believe that we are more than conquerors in this, you know, more than conquerors in for me, more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, yeah. you know, that, um, and I can do nothing apart from him. And, you know, just um, really bathing so important for me, it was bathing in the word of God. And what does his word say about my situation and about me and believing that they're promises. It's a, it's a contract, you know, it's a promise that he's given us. So, and it replaces those, those, you know, stinking thoughts with um, being empowered to heal. So it really does matter. It ma all of that matters. And it takes intentional, it doesn't just happen. We don't just go get plugged up to an IV and then we heal. <laughs> you are on, I believe that our people are on the greatest journey of their life if they take it serious. The greatest journey they will ever be on. They will be way better on the other side of this than they are before, whether God chooses to take them home or not. That is key whether he chooses yeah. to take you home or keep you here. I, I totally agree. And I love to um, challenge people to believe not only that they can get well, but that they will be better off as yes. a result, right? That your life after cancer will be better than your life before it. That's right. You'll be a better, you, you will be better and your life will be better. Um, and that cancer has to change you. Yes. Uh, it just has to, you can't, don't fight it. Right. But you like, let the process change you embrace it and embrace it with joy, you know? And, um, you know, what you said about, if you think you're a victim you start behaving like a victim. And that is so true because we see, you know, folks that, um, when, when you behave like a victim, you're always seeking sympathy, sure. right? And, and, and basically when you behave like a victim, your, your default <laughs> form of communication is complaining, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's just constantly, you know, expressing your woes and complaints to others to garner sympathy. And it becomes a vicious cycle of victimhood, right? and, and, but you know, you don't have to operate in that way, but the first thing is you got to catch yourself doing it, right? You got to catch yourself doing it and be like, I'm not going to do this. And I'm going to stop complaining. <laughs> I'm going to start counting my blessings. Let's take those thoughts captive. <clears throat> That's an action word. Yeah. Take it captive. So recognize it and have people that you can trust to help you take it captive. Like, you know, we always try to start our meetings with good things. You know, tell me something good that's going on in your life. You can always find something good. You know, wake up in the morning and, you know, and thank God for your breath. If that's all you can thank him for is your breath and thank him for that, you know, in his presence. So, yeah, it's take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to him. Anyway, that those are principles that have helped me heal. Me too. The way as well. And and we all have so much to be thankful for that we take for granted. You know, we all have so much, right? So much. I mean, if you're, if you're living in an air conditioned house, yes. you know, you're, you're Clean really, <laughs> you're really blessed. You, you have incredible, uh, incredible, wonderful blessing, you know, to, to live in a home, to have furniture and clothing, right. To have unlimited access to food. I mean, it's millions and millions of people in the world that don't have those things. Uh, but we just, we're so accustomed to it, right? We, we, it's easy to be spoiled in a, in a rich nation uh, with unlimited resources. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, cancer taught me how to count my blessings, all of them, right? And it just, uh, and that practice, that daily practice, I still do because, hey, people still irritate me. They still piss me off, right? They, they're mean to me, they attack me, whatever, you know, and, uh, uh, things don't go, you know, my days don't go the way I want them to go sometimes. 
Uh, and But in a, just a moment, I can quickly diffuse my frustration or anger uh, by counting my blessings. It's, I feel like it's a superpower, right? That we all have, like we have this incredible power to shift our thoughts away from negativity and disappointment and anger and all these things uh, to joy and gratitude. And you can do it in just a moment with, with just a quick little mental flip, just flipping a little switch. And, and um, it's so simple. Yeah. We've overcomplicated everything. We've overcomplicated healing. We've overcomplicated, you know, the transformation in our mind. We really have overcomplicated things. I, I, I truly believe that. I truly I believe agree. that healing is, that, that this is a journey, but those little things that you're talking about are so important. Your Beat Cancer Daily book, um, my son has it right now. He's 28 and he, I'm getting text messages from him throughout the week. This is so good. And it helps people just think about those things. That one right there. <laughs> I've got one over here too. There it is. <laughs> it's um, in all seriousness, it really is a great book to help you begin to make those shifts of, of okay, I can do this. I can start with this nugget today and, um, and move forward with that. It doesn't have to be complicated. I think truth is simple and, and the most powerful things you can do for yourself are simple things. Yes. Uh, and generally speaking, truth is simple and lies are complicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the more complicated your life gets, <clears throat> Uh, the more really, the more chaotic it gets too. Uh, the more stressful and confusing and chaotic it becomes. And so gravitating towards simplicity is, is so not only important, but powerful and beneficial. Um, so thanks for, thanks for the bringing that up. I, I'm so glad your son loves the book. You know, it's yes. obviously it's called Beat Cancer Daily. And so my heart was writing it for cancer patients. But as I was writing, I'm like, you know, this is, this is most of this is not specific to cancer. There are definitely cancer specific days and and points, but so much of it is just really universal, practical encouragement. Um, and uh, so anyway, it it really makes me feel extra good when someone who doesn't have cancer is reading it and enjoying it. <laughs> well, and he's my son, too. So it's not like I get that all the time. You know, they live with me daily. Yeah. So it's not, you know, you don't always hear it, but he found your book uh, laying on my desk and he, and he's been going through it and I've been getting these text messages going, mom, this is great. And awesome. of course we were, we wrote a little thing in it. So he was excited to read that, that as yeah. well, but he was, he really has benefited from it. So thank you for, for doing the book. It's good. Your contribution was wonderful. And I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the interview. Uh, but yes, everybody, if you haven't read Beat Cancer Daily yet, Susie wrote an amazing, beautiful entry. Uh, and I won't tell you what it is. You'll have to get the book to read it. So let's let's talk about Healing Strong. Okay. Because, uh, and I won't steal your thunder, but at some point in your, in your healing journey, you realized how uh, invaluable it is to have community support, to have those special relationships with people who understand what you're going through and you know because there's so many people that don't <laughs> right a uh, no one around you who has never had cancer understands what cancer feels like uh, b uh, <laughs> even the people who you know who've had cancer <laughs> don't know what it's like to most of them to go against conventional medical advice or to go down the holistic natural alternative road uh, when conventional treatment fails. And so, uh, so you're in a very, very sort of sub genre, right? Subcategory of humanity. <laughs> and uh, I can remember how just overwhelmed I was to, 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 with gratitude, to connect with any person who was a, a long-term holistic cancer survivor, 
back in 2004 and five, when I was in the, the most difficult part, you know, the, just the early stages of trying to get well and dealing with the, the fear, uncertainty and doubt. Um, and I wish I had had a support group. There wasn't one, uh, a, a holistic healing support group to be a part of. I needed it. I really wanted, it. I was very alone. So you uh, took it upon yourself to, to create something amazing. So let's talk about that. Well, um, it, it, I love talking about this. So thank you for <laughs> talking about healing strong, because I, I just believe there is such a, a, a great need and a great place, especially in today's society and what we're dealing with more than more than ever. I believe healing strong has a place. Um, as we move forward in, in the world today, it's greatly needed. Um, you know, Healing Strong, just to summarize before I get into the history of it, but we are really about coming alongside, like you said, brave men and women who want to be healed um, systemically, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and it's, it's not just about the tumor or the cancer, but it's about wholeness, wholeness and healing to wholeness. And we do this in community groups. We help them gain confidence and walking out their own journeys to healing and wholeness. And our groups focus on three things, rebuilding the body, restoring the soul and renewing the spirit. And um, we get to be the conduit to help people to start community education, support groups, and really laying out that foundation of hope for them. So just the background, 2013, um, Healing Strong brought in our living room, a small group of people together that um, I had seen some on the internet, some were my next door neighbors, my best friend, people that I had helped in their journey. Um, we all came together and we just really began to pray and seek the Lord about what he would want us to do to help you know, the community with finding truth, with sharing our stories of hope, like what can we do? And, he, and we felt like he led us to do a holistic faith-based conference in 2013. And that's how we met you, Chris. You were our you were our MC, and we had many different, you know, um, wonderful speakers and people that we cherished and loved. And uh, and something happened at that event. Um, we did not plan to do a healing strong organization. We planned to do a retreat, and so it was at that event that people. Um, the magic happened and people said, we have to come together. We have to support each other. And um, we were invited to be a part of a local small group. We met with them and it was in Gainesville, Georgia that our very first group started. And that was the first of many groups that, um, that would begin to spring up because they wanted to meet like the Gainesville group is meeting. And so we realized real quick that we needed to write curriculum establish a foundation and a structure, help train these group leaders, put a system in place, build a website, put a group portal together. Uh, and we continued to do that over the next year and a half. And then, and then it blew up. We, um, we now have, we have supported over 350 groups um, around the United States and most of the states, Canada, and like eight international countries since we started. Um, we continue to offer, look at ways to support our group leaders and offer curriculum, expand our curriculum. We've, we've expanded, uh, especially the last two years. I don't know, we could maybe talk about that a little bit too, our Healing Strong at Home. Um, but uh, in 2020, uh, we had this thing that's going around. I love how you say this thing that's going around happened. And we all, like so many, took a step back and said, okay, um, what do we do now? Because our groups stopped meeting. Some states wouldn't allow our groups. And then that's where we began to see fear, like we've never seen it before. Isolation, like we've never seen, they're not meeting in their churches um, or community groups or civic organizations. So isolation set in, anxiety set in, fear set in, depression. And um, so last year we spent the time developing um, the Renew Your Spirit part of Healing Strong. And so all up to this time, since 2013, we have focused a lot on rebuilding the body. We 
we have excellent curriculum and support. We've written, um, we have a participant guide and we've written other things as well. Um, but we, we wanted to help people connect with the Heavenly Father because he really is the one to guide us. So this last year, we, uh, we invited anyone who wanted to be a part of our Monday morning groups. Um, we used to come together and pray for Healing Strong and all of our group leaders on Monday mornings, but we opened it up to the public. And somewhere along the way, um, we just felt like we needed to just read the Bible. It was really, it was out of my own anxiety during that time. <laughs> so um, we opened it up and to just read in 80 days from Genesis to Revelation and people came. We didn't know who's going to come, who's going to read. But again, just like the conference and our group meetings, people came. And we are now on the third reading of Around the Word in 80 Days. And um, I can just tell you, we have seen more hope, more healings, more chains dropping off, more joy, more clarity, more confidence in those 80 days of reading than I've personally seen in the last nine years of doing Healing Strong. So um, we have... We're excited because we've redone our website to focus on rebuilding the body. We're, we're giving away so much stuff now. We've been gathering videos and conferences and all, you know, for nine years. And we've decided we're going to put a lot of it out there. So we've, we are redoing the website. We are free downloads. Our participant guide is going to be downloaded. We did a little jumpstart thing for 2021. That's free. Um, I think we're going to do a joke of the month, you know, laughter is good like medicine, um, a recipe of the month, but we are also equipping our group leaders to extend beyond our participant guide, which primarily was focused on rebuilding the body. But we have art therapy, Chris, we have all kinds of stuff that we put together. And so we are ready. I'm, I'm excited about 2021 and beyond because I feel like we are ready and I feel like we have clarity uh, and simplicity of, as we move forward, getting back to the basics of healing. Talk about what happens in the group setting. You yeah. Know, like, what, what, yeah. So each group takes on the personality of the group leader. We have group leaders that are either cancer thrivers or caregivers or some practitioners lead groups. All three of those really have different personalities. Um, so some may focus as a cancer thriver on sharing testimonies, and we have a curriculum that we have written that they follow for 12 months. Once they do that, we have group leaders that have been leading for almost five years now. So they will invite speakers in, but now we have the Healing Strong at Home curriculum with like 30 new lessons. So they're starting to go through that. Some may go through a series of square one videos. We have some that do the square one videos, Chris. They invite people and just use, especially during the lockdown, a lot of people have been showing videos. Um, and, and so in those meetings, uh, it's, it's, we, we open in prayer, we, um, we do a little engage activity to help them get to know each other. We do a 30 minute lesson and then we do a launch. And I, I, I used to run a group, it'd stick around for two and a half hours. Sometimes people don't want to leave. So they exchange their cards, they exchange their numbers. Some of them get together and go walking on the greenway. They, I mean, that's really where community starts to happen. Um, we do have a lot that are meeting on Zoom right now. So uh, that's really been tremendous because people from all over the world are calling in to the Rancho Cucamongo group that now has sometimes 70 or 80 people on their Zoom call, uh, you know, and they invite uh, speakers in. So, um, it's, it's so, it's, it's so amazing. It's so amazing what happens in these groups. Um, I'll give you one example. Our outstanding, one of the outstanding groups of the year led by a lady in Missouri. She's got stage four cancer. She has been fighting for her life for a long time and has been sent home several times from the hospital and they've given her no hope, no hope. So, um, our, we have regional mentors that we assign to our group leaders, and I'll get updates um, from our mentor how she's doing. And don't you know, she just ordered more of the more of the participant guides, and she's getting ready to start her group on um, in person again. 
Um, there was during the summer, uh, last summer, they were meeting at a, a pavilion where people could kind of spread out. But she believes so much in what she's doing that she wants to share hope with others. That's just one story. I, I, have, I have so many stories of, of the people and they're rallying behind her, they're rallying around her. Some groups are small groups with just three or four people and they love each other and they you know, meet weekly, some meet weekly, some meet every other week. It's, a, it's such a tremendous blessing. They are the miracles. They are the reason that Healing Strong exists are these group leaders that really care to share. Uh -huh. it's, just, it's just special. It's really special. It's amazing. And I mean, I wish, again, I wish this had existed for me when I was trying to get well, because I would have been there every, every meeting, yeah. <laughs> every week or every month, every chance I got, you know. Um, but so there's roughly 350 groups. We've World supported 350 groups over the last you know, six years or so since we released it. We yeah. have over 200 right now that are you know, 200 active, active groups. Leaders. So What's the easiest way for someone to, to find out if they have a local group mm -hmm. or start a group if they don't have one? Oh, we would love it. We are here to help you start your group. Um, so if you go on the website, healingstrong.org, and you any page you go on should have find a group. So you go on there and there's a directory. You type in your city or your state. We've just redone that, Chris. It's super easy to find. You'll get a whole long list. And I just want to say this, if you know someone that is in a journey and needs to be connected with a group, maybe you can do the legwork for them, do a screenshot of the group and email it to them. Um, our whole part is to connect people. You can even email us. And if there's anything we can do to help you, we have a team of volunteers that um, answer these emails and really want to help people get connected. So, yeah. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't figured this out by now, uh, you know, these are, these are not your typical cancer support groups. Uh, they're, they're very, very different. Um, what I found with typical cancer support groups is there's very little encouragement, uh, or practical information. It's, it's really, uh, sadly that patients getting together, um, uh, to talk about their problems and with no, you know, sort of no end in sight, uh, and, those kind of groups, I, I encourage patients to stay away from those groups because I feel like they're not very useful and um, can be do more harm than good. But of course, every Healing Strong group is different because different people, but the curriculum and the model that you put in place is so wonderful and encouraging and life-giving, you know, and... Uh, this is a it's just a completely different thing it's funny to me i can't believe it's been i can't believe it's been that many years nine years since we did the healing strong retreat mm -hmm. and we first met that doesn't even feel right that doesn't sound right <laughs> it doesn't doesn't <laughs> it doesn't 2013 i started blogging in uh in 2010 mm -hmm. so i'd been doing it about three years i mean i I don't even know how you found me. <laughs> Cause oh, I, I love how we found you. And I love that phone call that I had with you. And we've talked about this before. It's so funny. I'm like, Chris, we're doing this little event. We have no money, no money. It's just, you know, a lot of us cancer thrivers and, you know, would you, would you be willing to come? We don't even know what we want you to do at this point. Maybe an MC. We're not even sure what we're doing, but you know, I mean, that was how the conversation went. And you were so great, Chris, you, I'm in. And you actually then led me to some other people that actually spoke at the event with us. So it was one beautiful um, spark, I think that happened for all of us. Um, I, yeah, and I, I don't even remember the details of the conversation that we had either, but I just remember thinking, uh, you know, I love this person's heart, you know, like, I just love your heart. I could just tell you love the Lord. And, and, you know, I was like, yeah, yep. I'm happy to be a part of this. Like whatever it is, Susie, whatever you're doing, sign me up. I know it's going to be wonderful. And, uh, and, you know, to think of how far it's come now, 
with hundreds of groups around the world and so many people being encouraged and empowered and loved on. And it's just so cool. So awesome. We're just scratching the surface, Chris. Yeah. There's a really, there's so much, especially mm. now there's, mm. We yeah. need this and we are a network. We're a grassroots network in these communities. And we need to really nurture these communities that yeah. are, um, cause it's not easy to stand alone. It's not easy for these group leaders to, you know, day in and day out to continue to encourage communities that have, um, that there's a lot of skepticism around, but that's, like I said, um, we're just scratching the surface. There's mm -hmm. so much, so much that needs to be done. And there's a great need. I mean, tens of thousands of people are diagnosed with cancer every day around the world. And yes. uh, right, you know, every single day, yeah. there's people that need help and love and encouragement and support. And, and uh, yeah, so it's a big, it's a big mission. <laughs> there's a, and it's not, and I should mention this too, I, it, it doesn't cost really hardly anything to be a part of a group or even to start a group, right? So to start a group, you just pay a one-time registration fee. That helps us just get you up and going. But when you start a group, you have access to, just to give you an idea, we have about 300 downloads on the group leader portal, downloads of content, information, videos, curriculum, we brand you, there's participant guides. We, um, we try to make it as, as cheap as possible. So there's a one-time registration fee. And then after that, um, I, yeah, we, you come to our conferences, group leader conferences are free um, to the group leaders. We, when we do conferences, our group leaders get a discount. We give everything to our group leaders at cost. So our little books that we've put out several books, those are all at cost to our group leaders. Um, our membership, um, can we talk about our membership? Yeah, please yes, do. Would that be okay? Yes, so our, yes. So the interesting thing about Healing Strong being a grassroots movement is we don't want um, industry to dictate you know, what we're doing. And we believe very much that from the inside out, our participants and those people that support what we do um, by, by giving a monthly contribution from, you know, 15, 25, 50, 75 a month, um, you can support our efforts. We have a very small team. I'm part-time. I have two very part-time people. We try to, we do way more with volunteers than we do with uh, staff, but we know that to grow um, and to be solid, our membership needs to grow. And so if you're looking for an organization that really is here to help uh, our cancer patients and others that are healing, truly seeking wholeness um, with, with others within their community, this would be a, a place to go and to start. We just rolled out the membership platform. Um, Chris, you were a big part of helping guide us in, in deciding to do that. And we're so happy that we did. Um, we've made a lot of changes. You get free books, you get access to our conferences, um, video trainings. We do, we've been doing webinars every month. Those rest on our member platform. So we look at some value added services that we can give to our, um, our members as well. That they're very important to us, not just, not just because you support the organization, but we want uh, to support you as well. So um, the membership is an important part of Healing Strong also. Well, you mentioned this, you touched on this and, and I'll go a little deeper on it, but there's a lot of cancer charities out there and uh, uh, many of them, especially the big ones that uh, everybody's heard of, are taking tons of money from the pharmaceutical industry yes. and they accomplish very little. Uh, they, they waste most of the money that comes in on giant salaries and marketing efforts and things like that. And uh, Healing Strong is one of, one of just a a very short list of cancer nonprofit charities that I personally give money to like joyfully support because of the incredible work that you're doing and uh, how many thousands and thousands of lives you've impacted and will continue to impact through the small groups and through your website and membership platform and all that. So, you know, it really is 
uh, something wonderful. If, if you're watching this thinking like, I, yeah, I want to, I do want to give to a cancer charity, give to Healing Strong. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. You get your tax write off <laughs> and you can know that you're not supporting pharmaceutical drug research or, you know, uh, pink football helmets or, you know, whatever uh, other scheme. Uh, some of these charities are coming up with year after year. Uh, that accomplish nothing, don't serve cancer patients, don't cure the disease, you know, just don't do anything. They just perpetuate their own brand. Uh, and this is not one of those charities. So um, yeah, it's run by the, the best people on earth, <laughs> in my opinion. I'd love for you to, you know, we've got a few minutes left, but I'd love for you to share a few of the stories. I mean, you've got stories for days. But and every time you and I talk privately, you're always just blowing my mind with just some just incredible stories of the of people that are coming through the groups and, and testimonials and just wonderful things. Are there one or two that are top oh. of mind that you I don't want to put you on the spot? No, I, I actually had one that just happened this week. Um, I, ha I do it. have many. Okay. So we're doing this around the word in 80 days. We're getting ready to start in the New Testament. We do it every night at 8 p.m. And most of the people on there, most people reading are cancer thrivers. Many of them are fighting for their life. They've got advanced cancer. Doctors have, you know, given them no hope. And we get to see them every night on these calls. Well, I, uh, every week right now we have new hosts. So Jeff and I, we hosted last week. This week we have new hosts that are hosting. And they did something really special. Um, I want to tell you two stories that happened in the last week, but this one is a lady named Sandy that gave her testimony at the end. Now, we didn't know this was going to happen. And I've known Sandy through the Monday mornings with Healing Strong and Sandy has stage three lymphoma. She's had it five years. Five years ago, she could not lift her head out of bed. She and her husband live in Canada. Um, Chris, you're a part of her story as well. Finding Chris work finding healing strong. So she found us last year and I can just, it's so precious when we get to connect with individuals, but Sandy used to get on the call and she back way up from, you know, the zoom thing. So we didn't see her very much. <laughs> and, um, and one day I just, I just, you know, called her out and said hello. And she was just uh, so sweet because she, she said it meant something to her that somebody saw her. Well, as we're doing the Around the Word in 80 Days um, this last time, I asked Sandy, I said, Sandy, would you like to read, be one of the readers? Sandy just went pale. And she, I, I didn't know what had happened. I mean, she stumbled and, and she said, I, I don't know. Let me think about it. Long story short, Sandy had been bullied in school. A teacher had really hurt her heart. Um, she was born um, with, ex she needed extensive surgery on her face. She, it was, it was a deep, deep soul wound of reading out loud. Three days later, I get an email from Sandy and she says, Susie, I feel like I need to do this. So Sandy gave her a testimony last night. Number one, Sandy is our best reader. She is thriving in her cancer hmm. journey she is strong and full of joy and sharing not only the testimony of hope and healing through the bullying that she got in school, but Sandy is healing. And so that's just one story of a heart connection that we've had. Um, another thing that happened last week, we have one uh, branded person that's on that has connected with Healing Strong, Chris, through Chris Beat Cancer. She watched the videos recently, your square one videos. So she has come on. She also was very hesitant, skeptical about our group. And, um, but don't you know it, some of our, our most favorite time over the last few weeks with her has been her kids reading. And uh, last week, we had kids night uh, on Around the Word in 80 Days. And all of her children read. There's from the age of 8 to 23, supporting their mom. So her mom has invited them in to be a part of this even this thing that Healing Strong this thing that Healing Strong is doing. Now they come every night, and don't you know they they actually put on a stick drama performance to their favorite song for all of us last week. Just blessed all of our hearts. So here we are. So many people are afraid to read; they don't know what this is about. And here are these kids from New York 
that are online reading because they're supporting their mom who is going through a hard cancer journey right now. She just started. And so she's really praying through, but yet she's seeing her kids be a part of this, of this reading. Those are two of my favorite. I can just tell you, goodness, group leaders that have, have come in and served as group leaders. Some have had recurrence. We walk alongside them. Um, the connections and the relationships that people make in Healing Strong are way better than, than anything else. And I just get to be a part of it. It is a get-to attitude for all of us at Healing Strong. It's the biggest blessing, Chris. I love that. You, you had me a little choked up there <laughs> during the story. All, every time I talk to you, you tell me stories. That, did she get me choked up? <laughs> it's amazing. God is really doing something. <clears throat> I mean, he really is doing something. And, and because we are faith-based um, and we have people of all, all different faiths that join Healing Strong, okay? It's level at the cross. It's mm -hmm. level in the word of God. His word is truth. So if we can stand on his word and seek his word together, I believe that healing, I'm just seeing more and more healing happen because of that. And um, with all that's happened this year and all the division, what we're seeing on those daily calls around the word is nothing short of a miracle. And it's, it, there, it's a mystery. But come join us. You'll see it for yourself. I mean, things happen on the calls. It's oh. And there's a link to the calls if, if folks want to get on those calls. There's a link on healingstrong.org. Yes. Yes. It's easy there to is. Find. Or go to around the word in 80 days. 80, you know, the number 80 days. 80, around yeah. the world in 80 days.com. Around the word, not world. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, people. It's <laughs> yeah, it's a play on around the world, obviously. Yes, around the word in 80 days.com. Well, Susie, thank you so much. You're just such a wonderful person. I, I'm your biggest fan. I'm your, I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> we're in this together. It's thank you for just for taking for all the work, all the initiative, all the blood, sweat, and tears that you've put into to build this wonderful organization. I mean, it's just, it's just such a great thing. It's such an incredible thing. And I just, you know, obviously I'm talking about it a lot because it's so great and people, it just makes me so happy that people are finding Healing Strong through me, through the Square One program or through my, you know, me mentioning it in my books or whatever, however I'm mentioning it uh, in interviews. And so I'm, I'm gonna continue to do that. Just keep funneling people to Healing Strong because it's so, so wonderful. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much again. Um, I'd like to ask you to, to close if, would you mind sharing, um, just, you know, for someone who's newly diagnosed with cancer, uh, what do they need to know? What, what, what do you say to someone when they come to you and say, I was just diagnosed? What do I need to know? Um, take time, pray, um, surround yourself with people that are going to speak life and truth into you. Um, there are many, many um, resources that you can begin to research. Look at this as just an opportunity to grow. Don't jump into something. And if you, and I tell this to people, if you don't have peace in your spirit, if, if for some reason you have this nagging tug, listen to that. There is a reason that you have that. And, and when you are healing, operating in a spirit of faith and not fear is your best friend. And so Chris Wark has, uh, there's a video you do. Um, it's your very first video about how, when you're first diagnosed, I, I say that's one of the best videos out there that you can do. But seek wisdom with the Lord and uh, connect with Healing Strong. We have a lot of just different people that can help you so we can put you in touch with a local group leader in your area, hopefully. Um, but you have time and um and send us a prayer request because we have a prayer a prayer team that will pray for you and i believe he's going to show you a light path that's so good it's true most cancer patients have time and and you don't need to be rushed into things you don't understand out of fear um but you do have to be willing to 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 take time to learn and study right and yes. research and uh and let the lord lead you 
uh, in the path of healing and, uh, and follow your peace and joy. Uh, and uh, so, so many good things there. And, and thank you for plugging my little video. It's called What Every Cancer Patient Needs to Know. And it's the, it's the first video on my website. It's just the first thing that people can find and watch. And it's 11 minutes long if you haven't seen it. Um, and I think it'll be helpful and encouraging to you. So, all right, Susie, thank you so much. We'll do this again. I'd love to do make this a regular thing and get updates from you and, and let you bring more wonderful stories uh, to share with, uh, with my audience. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Love you, Chris. Thank you, you so much. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Thanks again for watching. Please share this with people you care about. Obviously, if you've made it this far in the video, you you know uh, how good it is. And you know, there's people in your life that will be encouraged by it and may find an incredible resource for them. And uh, for you uh, in healing strong. And so uh, help me reach more people help us reach more people by sharing this video, like and subscribe on YouTube and, and all that. So thanks for watching. See you all soon. Bye-bye.